Pulmonary fibrosis just means that there's scarring of the lungs. Idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis is a very specific subset of patients who have scarring of the lungs that has a bad prognosis. So the average survival from the time that you're diagnosed to the time that they get into really severe trouble with their breathing is about three to five years. Prior to um, last October, we did not have any medicines that were clearly available for physicians to treat this disorder. We now have two medications, nintenidib and perfenidone. And the trade names for those drugs are OFEV and Espriet. So both of these medications are designed to try to decrease the decline in a patient's breathing tests. So another challenge with these medications, though, is they don't necessarily make people feel better. Um, so they don't make people cough less. They don't make their breathing tests get better. What we hope that they do is that that decline over time is a little bit slower. From the standpoint of safety and efficacy and are there any new problems with profenadone since, uh, since it's been marketed, there's a lot of information about profenadone that it's very safe. The, the side effects of the drug, they're very well known, so they can affect liver function. They typically do not uh, affect liver severe enough to cause major problems. But it is a recommendation that we obtain blood tests for liver function every month for the first six months and then every three months after that if everything is stable. The other big side effects for profenadone are uh, GI side effects. And that's more of a sensation that their belly doesn't feel right. It's not really clear nausea, vomiting, or diarrhea. The best way to manage that is to have patients take the medicine with some food and to make sure that they evenly spread out the three doses throughout the day. Um, the other big side effect, which can be a problem in South Carolina, is that there is a photosensitivity rash. So they have to be very careful about being out in the sun. Lots of sunblock, wide brim hat, long sleeve shirt. Um, if we have a patient that has a rash, we stop the medicine and typically the rash will go away. And similarly, for OFEV or Nintenidib, it's a very well tolerated medicine. The major side effect for Nintenidib is that it can cause diarrhea. The diarrhea, it, it can be severe in people, and it's pretty common in the studies. It was about 60% of the patients in the studies had diarrhea reported at least once while they were in the year-long study. Some folks can get that, and the best way to manage that is that we use agents to slow down their motility, so Lamotil or Imodium can be given with that, and then patients can tolerate it really well. Um, similar to profenadone, liver function tests can be affected by nintenidib. So for nintenidib, we also recommend that you do monthly liver function tests for at least the first three months and then about every three months thereafter. If the patient is clearly having progression, I think that that's an appropriate patient to think about lung transplant. If, they're, if they are a person that doesn't have any other comorbidities, then that's an appropriate person to really talk to about transplant. In fact, I think if someone doesn't have comorbidities and they get a diagnosis of IPF, we should probably talk to them when we make the diagnosis. This is fantastic that we have two medications that we can now write for patients where before we had no therapy where we could say that we have a medicine that's going to affect the fibrosis. So this is, this is a really big deal that we have these. Unfortunately, they're just a start. They don't, they don't make people feel better. So they don't make the cough go away. They don't make their exercise tolerance suddenly get better. They really don't make their lung function get better. So we, they have real limitations, these medicines. I think they're really good because if we can slow the fibrosis, patients can live longer, and ideally they can have better quality of life for a longer period of time. 
But we really need to prove that. We need to prove that the interventions that we do for people actually make a difference in their outcomes in terms of how they feel. So I think the next steps for IPF is to continue to work hard to find medications that will work in combination with these two. That when we look at outcomes, we look at breathing tests, but we also really look at patient-related outcomes. So do they feel better? Are they having better quality of life? Can they walk farther? Can they participate in their community uh, much at a higher level? Th those are the directions that we have to go.